Want to make some personalized key rings? I'll show you how. So basically what I'm doing here is just deciding on a layout or design for these key tags and just messing around a bit with the text and just getting everything the way I wanted to. And then I'm going to export it as an SVG file. And we are basically going to use that as our template inside the VCarve. So setting up a new job, we're quickly just going to go to the job size and adjust that to suit the pieces of material that we're going to be using. And in this case, this one is 15 millimeters thick. Uh, and you'll notice I'm using millimeters and not uh, inches. So next we're going to import this design that we just created. And just select that, click open. And now I just need to bring it to the center of the material. There we go. And I'm also going to move this to the side because I need to duplicate this a couple of times. And I've already measured this out and nine times across this way is probably going to be enough. So we'll just make some adjustments and click copy. Right, next we need to move this just a little bit again, sort of center. Uh, that'll do. Right, next. I want to cut out these little holes so I'm going to select them uh, just like this there we go all done and now we need to create a toolpath for this and we are going to do uh, let's see we're just going to go slightly lower than the actual thickness of the material 15.3 millimeters we do want to make sure we cut on the inside and Everything else is fine. We'll just give this a name so we know what it is that we are cutting. Click OK. Just OK again. And close. I'm not going to preview this. And since we are using the same end mill, uh, we might as well just cut the outside shape of these or the profile. And just make sure you change this to outside and same depth. And I'm just going to make a slight change here because, uh, let's see, uh, 1.7 millimeter there. Yeah, that looks good. Happy with that. Click OK. And then I also want to add some tabs. Right now, let's see if we, let's do three, four tabs, three. By default, it, it just puts it where, where it thinks it needs to go. But I'm going to move these because you can see the edge of the material is, is quite close. We, we're using pretty much all of the material um, on this. So click OK. Again, rename this. Click Calculate. OK. And now if you do a preview, if I just zoom in here, you can see there's not a lot of material left. So moving those tabs like this is probably the better way to go. All right, so this looks good. And let's close this. And we're going to combine this, merge these two parts because we're using the same end mold anyway. So click Merge Tool Pass, close again. And then we're going to save this. And click Save Tool Path and just give it a name for whatever you want to call this. Click Save. And let's set up our material. Now again, as this is cutting out, I've noticed that it wasn't perfectly straight so along to this edge where I just unscrewing this last screw now you'll see we got pretty close to the side of the material but still worked fine so that's all good back into light burn 
I'm basically now just going to create a template for me to use so that I can engrave all of these key tags. On the laser, I'm just going to use like three millimeter MDF, just a piece of off cut, make sure that fits and then kind of just stick it down with some blue painters tape just to hold it in place so it doesn't move around when I start adding all of these pieces to engrave. After it's been cut out, we're left with these shapes, which is a perfect fit for all of our blanks. And this is pretty much what it looks like when it's done. Still has a bit of uh, residue on the top, which we'll just rub off. And to do the back side, uh, it's pretty much the same procedure. So just getting my text and everything right the way I want it. And then I'm gonna reuse the same layout. So to make sure everything lines up exactly, I'm just copying the text into those uh, shapes. After that's been done, it's time for a light sand, just to get rid of all the rough edges. Just make sure everything feels nice and smooth to the touch. This is basically my go-to for sealing anything like this. Uh, it's all, both of them are water-based, so they dry pretty quickly, which is really good. Uh, easy to clean, obviously. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna coat each one three times and letting it dry properly between coats, just to see what it looks like. And as you can see, when it's all dry, the one on the left has a slightly deeper, richer color to it. And I kind of like that actually. So there you can see a better view of what that looks like. And to the touch, it feels a, a bit more premium almost, you could say. Um, just, it feels nicer to the touch. So for this project, I'm gonna go with that one. And I'm pretty happy with this. And the customer was pretty happy as well, especially with the, the design, because it matches what they have on their campground. There we go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. And I'll catch you next time.